Hi there, it's Frank Reiner here and Karen Stever. We are in the middle of Stever's public playground project and we're going to take a little bit of a break from all the chatter about submissions and phases and do a little bit of a Q&A for you today. Can I start? Yeah. <laughs> it's all you. Back to school week. You guys are probably really happy about that because your little rugrats have been going crazy for the last month. So, seeing as it's back to school, what was your first lunchbox, Frank? I had a, 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 a Peanuts... Uh, like Charlie Snoopy, Brown? Snoopy oh, okay. uh, uh, lunchbox. It was plastic, it was blue. I had the Snoopy snow cone machine. You put your lunch in that thing? Yeah. That was my lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I think that thing was overrated. No. Lots that thing of, was tough to grind that. I freaked thing. out when I saw it. It was tough going, grinding that ice. Well, yeah, but thing. you felt like you worked for it. Kids wouldn't go for that these days. <laughs> <laughs> so was it plastic or was it metal? Yeah, the plastic peanuts lunchbox. And okay. then later I got one of those metal ones that... Like uh, an A-team or... Who's no, it was like one of those industrial ones that construction workers use that had oh. metal, metal rivets in it. It was really badass. Oh, okay. I would use it today. If, if, <laughs> I would not be ashamed of that. What was the biggest musical turning point for you? Well, I, uh, I've been through lots of band stuff. I've been in dance troupes. Um, I remember specifically, I, I did well on the dance charts actually, all the DJ dance charts with my music. But I remember one night, uh, we were at a, a pretty heavily packed club, and I had like six backup dancers. And I remember getting off the stage that night with a really bad migraine and the guy that was my road manager had taken me back to the hotel and put me to bed and then he went off to hang out with the girls in the hot tub. And I remember waking up the next day thinking this is not my style of music at all and I didn't feel comfortable there and it might have been the migraine <laughs> influence but I, I thought you know what I've done well at this and I think I'd rather go and do, uh, do, do well at something that's in my genre. And I've always loved rock. I mean, I've always loved Beethoven, and I've always loved Deep Purple, and those kinds of bands. And I just felt like that was the time that, and I left the tour, <laughs> and the, the hire manager was pretty mad about it. And that's okay, because I, I felt like that wasn't for me. And so that was a huge turning point. And the second turning point was uh, after I had come to L.A., when I first came here, I thought, oh, I'm going to tackle the music industry and all this. And then I remember thinking, I don't, we were just driving along somewhere, and I remember thinking, I don't care what people think anymore. And that was a really freeing experience for me. And ever since then, I really feel like I don't have to worry what anybody thinks. I make the music I love, and I love to share it. But at the time I'm making it, I, I don't worry about it. So those were two kind of pivotal moments that I remember um, just getting back in touch with myself, which is very cool. You began as an assistant, and throughout the years you eventually became a producer. What's the number one rule an assistant should learn when restarting at a recording studio? And how many assistants have you and Scott Humphrey tossed over the edge of the Chop Shop recording studio balcony? <laughs> assistants are, are, it's a tough, it's been a tough thing, it's been really tough going, uh, because uh, it's a demanding job, and one that a lot of guys like to say the right thing, and when they actually get into the environment they uh they don't they don't like it it's it's a lot of work it's it's 24 hours a day you're always on call you're responsible for everything and when one thing goes wrong it's all your fault you're to blame yeah so you know what's the upside of that well if you stick around long enough you may have a toehold into the industry that uh you know you usually don't know enough about to even realize that you know, you want to be in it because you take a good look at it and you might not care for it. So a lot of guys get a taste of it in a couple of weeks they're out of there. Right. Um, it's about attitude over skill, it's about uh, studio etiquette over trying to get your opinion in or try to, you know, contribute cr creatively. I mean, that's why I love TPR. It's like, there's no hierarchy here. It's like everybody can send stuff in. You're not an assistant in the corner of the room who, um, it's gets blamed for everything. Gets blamed for everything <laughs> and can't really take part in the process. They're they're supposed to be seen but not heard. Uh, we're uh, we're uh, definitely uh, taking another approach with TPR. So hopefully this this idea of a studio assistant is isn't the only way to get into the music business. 
uh, just because I did that way. So your your feelings mean... your feelings are still hurt from being an assistant. <laughs> no, you just you gotta swallow a lot. You know, yeah. you're sitting there and you're like, wow, this is so it's, for it's people humiliating. Who want... It's it's degrading. But you know, when you're young, you can do that. But you know, I, I couldn't do that now. I'd just be like, I'm out of here. Uh, so for people who want to do that, yeah, it's yeah. a tough go. Yeah. All right. So. Mr. Rogers was a good one. Good singing voice on that guy. <laughs> um, I was influenced mostly by Sesame Street, um, or even The Muppet Show. Uh, the fact that a Muppet can sing is still amazing to me, you know, when I, when I think about that. Uh, the Ladybug's Picnic song was a huge influence on me. I like Ladybugs. I like Picnics. I really like Sesame Street. Yeah, Ladybug Picnic. That was a big one. That might be my theme song now. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, no, it's like, that's it, no. <laughs> did it teach you how to count? Like, I think that was the, that <laughs> no, was I the liked them, agenda. That I liked part. them jumping in those potato sacks and roasting marshmallows. Kind of like the Brady Bunch potato sack race? Yeah, I didn't watch Brady Bunch. What? No. They were, they were a musical influence. On you? What about Partridge Family? Uh, Johnny Bravo. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and all the, the whole family got together. And, <laughs> and the Partridge, I didn't, I thought the Partridge Family and Brady Bunch, I definitely like Brady Bunch. Uh, I like the monkeys. You like Big Monkey. Big Monkey should do a monkeys cover. Hey, hey, we're the monkeys. And people say we monkey around. But we're too busy singing to put anybody down. We're just trying.